Thank you. And uh, in the interest of uh, logistics and time and not having to get up and down, I'll just stay here to make my introduction, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, as a journalist who started, I actually first covered China from Hong Kong when I was based here from 1995 to 2000. I would go in and out of China. I was again based there as uh, bureau chief in Beijing and Shanghai from 2009 until 2013 when I left the Washington Post. And one thing, when you're a foreign correspondent, you actually don't get to interview uh, government officials, or at least not very often. So we rely on Xinhua. And so uh, Xinhua was the official voice. That's how we know what's going on. That's we wait for the official statements. So I was actually a little bit surprised to find out that Xinhua has a social media editor. And so I guess we're going to learn a little bit about what Xinhua's presence is on social media, what that, uh, what that job entails, how the social media presence interacts with Xinhua as the official news agency of China. And so without uh, further ado, I'll introduce uh, uh, Ailing Chang, or Chang Ailing. And I think you've got a small presentation for us first, and then we hopefully, we're a little short on time, but we'll have time. I'll maybe have one or two questions, and we'll see if any of you have some. So, Cheng Ai Ling, you like this stand? Okay. Thank you, please, for your kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very honored to be the last speaker of this marvelous conference. And I know we've been sitting here all the morning, so <laughs> thank you very much for not giving up on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Chang Ailing with Xinhua News Agency. Um, Xinhua is uh, China's uh, state news agency, and we operate uh, 32 uh, branches in China and uh, about 180 bureaus across the world. So it's big. It's a massive organization. And also Xinhua was established in 19... Uh, 71, so it is 87 years old. So today I'm very uh, honored to have this opportunity to share with you how this old and big news organization is doing, has been doing in recent years to cope with the era of social media. Uh, I have a small, yeah, World Cup. Uh, we know that now World Cup is going on and uh, if I remember it correctly, it opened on June the 14th, and the first match was between Russia and Saudi Arabia. In the 12th minute, uh, the host nation, nation scored the first, first goal, and Xinhua produced a very short video recording that moment in 10 seconds by our uh, uh, new platform called uh, Media Brain. Uh, Media Brain actually has another name. It's called uh, Magic. It's the combination of uh, MGC, that is machine-generated content and artificial intellectual. Uh, this uh, platform uh, is designed to have the cap uh, capability of gathering, editing, and producing a, vi a video news item in just 20 seconds. And here I'd like to show you another screenshot. And that screenshot I took at uh, 12 a.m. this morning. And it showed, it's the real data of this platform. Uh, it showed that so far, since the World Cup opened, Xinhua has produced 23,000 videos by using this uh, media brain platform. Actually, we launched this uh, platform uh, at the end of last year, and uh, uh, it has been designed to be incorporated into every stage of news production, from news gathering to finding leads, editing, distribution, and finally, feedback analysis. Uh, we, put into, we put it to use in March to aid our coverage of China's two sessions. Uh, I think many of you may have heard of it, two sessions, uh, China's National People's Congress and uh, the Chinese, people, uh, the Chinese people's, people's Political Consultative Conference, uh, the most important annual political events. And usually there will be piles of government documents and thousands of proposal, proposal, uh, proposals from the lawmakers. So a lot of work for our reporters to do. So when we are tried, when we announce that we will put this into, uh, into use for our coverage for the two sessions, our reporters were actually a little bit curious. We want to see whether it could help us, you know, relieve our reporters of those some uh, grunt work. And, uh, so here, my colleagues actually made a, sh a short video uh, trying to find out how this platform was being used for the two sessions and what the reactions from our reporters. And here I'd like to show you. 
Uh, it's quite long, it's five minutes, so I will only play the first part. Just click it. You just saw me getting to know one of Xinhua's new reporters, which just by uploading a selfie will go through the thousands of delegates at two sessions and tell me which ones have proposals that I might be interested in. Now this reporter doesn't need a lunch break, doesn't need to stand in line, and in fact doesn't even need to leave the office at all. This is one tool made by Media Brain, which is Xinhua's AI-assisted reporting program. Media Brain has made eight videos over the past few weeks. Thousands of documents, reports, photographs, and articles are produced at political events like the two sessions. And Media Brain has been busy collecting this data, scanning images, and crunching numbers, basically, so we don't have to. So, what has Media Brain found out? And do journalists need to worry for their jobs? First up, what can it do? On March the 5th, Media Brain identified that the word development was the most mentioned word in this year's government work report. The word in second place, reform, was more frequently used in any other work report in the past five years. So in addition to analysing all of the documents from this year, Media Brain was also fed the reports issued since 1980. And interestingly, it identified some phrases and words that had fallen out of use in China's political lexicon, Counter-revolution in yellow disappeared in 1994. Labour reform, which is there in blue, was gone by 1996. And re-education, which you can see in green, fell out of use by 2011. China has gone through profound changes over the past four decades. Imagine how long it would take to go through every single report to identify these patterns. That's why we need reporters like Mr Xu here to help make sense of this huge repository of data. OK, I won't allow him to speak. Okay, uh, so here, like my colleague said in the video, uh, artificial intelligence is everywhere nowadays. At Xinhua, uh, we are exploring how we can um, fit this technology into the daily workings of modern journalism while understanding its limitations. So the media brain system is about just that. Uh, here we all know that China has the largest population of internet users. Uh, about 753 million people access the internet on mobile devices. So this is a, a trend. Uh, people are getting more and more aligned, reliant on mobile devices to, have, to, 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 have, to get the access to information. So this is a, a very important trend that, uh, that we can't ignore. So at Xinhua, uh, as an old and traditional news agency, we are Im implementing a mobile-first strategy, pulling our resources, technology, strengths, to uh, use mobile devices to reach out to our audience. Here I'd like sh to share your story with you. Okay. Uh, uh, on June 21st, uh, Xinhua released a news item on our WeChat account. Uh, we all know that, that WeChat is a multi-purpose messaging, social media, and a mobile payment app, and it has about one billion monthly active users. So Xinhua has an account on WeChat. And on that day, we uh, post this news item on our chat, WeChat, and the title goes, Just in Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Deposed. So in Chinese, the title is only, has only nine characters. But this post has view of eight million, and reposts uh, 460,000, uh, and had comments for more than uh, 70,000 within 30, uh, 36 hours. How could that be? Um, often uh, reporters and, and editors with news agency, we don't interact with uh, our readers directly. Uh, when we first establish our, social, our presence on social media, we actually follow that rule of not replying to comments. But in this case, this rule was broken. Here is why this post went viral on China's social media. Uh, we could see that one comment was liked by readers uh, for you know, more than 100,000 times, and our reply was liked. You, you, you can see the number, it's too complicated for me to, to, to pronounce. And the, the, the comment uh, reads, only nine characters and you need three editors. 
That's the comment. And Xinhua replied, yeah, the first editor, editor is responsible for just in. And the second uh, editor is responsible for Saudi Arabia's crown, crown prince. And the third responsible for the post. Any problems? And three question mark. So <laughs> this reply triggered heated discussions, not only online, but also in the newsroom. Some of our more seasoned staff felt it really unaccept unacceptable. I remember one individual telling me that uh, this is really outrageous. And how could our reporters be so rude, so disrespectful to our readers? Um, but, you know, as it turned out, our readers like it. And many said that this reply humanized Xinhua. And they felt like they're talking, they're having this dialogue with, with a real person. It's not like a, they're, they're talking to a robot. And of course, in, the other, in another reply, uh, we did explain why a short story like this needs three editors. And, and we also, we sincerely apologized for a typo error in this story. So uh, the engagements of this post were phenomenal. And we gained, because of this single paste, our WeChat account gained 500,000 more subscribers. And we currently have, for, for WeChat account, Xinhua currently has uh, uh, 6 million subscribers. And by the way, the three editors for this post, the three editors, they were all in their 20s. And uh, they were award an annual award uh, of Xinhua by our editorial leadership. And, and still, they are running uh, our Xinhua WeChat account. So uh, this is about our WeChat account. Another, okay. Another of our mobile platforms is Xinhua News app. We launched the current version of Xinhua News in 2015. To date, it has been downloaded uh, uh, 280 million times. It offers breaking local, uh, national, and global headlines and features a, customer, a customized news feed. Mm. The app also offers a category called uh, on the scene. It integrates live streams, text broadcast, photos, and videos. So here is a screenshot shows um, a live stream of the summit between leaders of uh, North Korea and South Korea. Uh, from the screenshot, we can see that this live stream was watched by more than 1.5 million people. And if you scroll down, uh, you could see text reporting, photos, videos beneath this live, live streaming. Hmm. So uh, in 2017, Xinhua News App hosted more than 1,200 such live streams. Besides Xinhua News, we have another news app called Xinhua Cloud. This, the name was translated by myself. My colleague doesn't like it because we don't have an English name for it. In Chinese, we call it Xinhua Yun. Uh, uh, Xianchang Yun, sorry. It's a free editing app for mobile devices, which was launched in February last year. And it enables a reporter to do live streaming, filming, online video editing, and distributing all with a cell phone. More than uh, 2,500 news organizations and institutions across China have registered on this app, and more than 18,000 journalists are our registered users. And every day, more than 200 live streams were pushed out on this, on this app. It provides local media outlets to uh, a, a national platform to distribute content across China. So um, Xinhua is also uh, trying to reach out to our foreign audience too. Uh, in 2015, we officially launched, uh, launched the new China accounts on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, I think those social media platforms have helped us uh, to improve our new services to the foreign audience and help us better understanding um, and better understand their needs and their feedbacks of our stories. Um, last year, uh, we delivered more than 800 live streams uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on the topics ranging from uh, US President Donald Trump's visit to China, and also uh, like uh, the, uh, the docking between Tianzhou One cargo carrier and uh, Tiangongdu Space Lab in orbit, and also earthquake uh, revenue and of course, pandas. Uh, so that's all for my uh, presentation. I know it's, very quite, it's quite late, and we still have some very interesting groups 
uh, discussion waiting. And uh, in the end, I would like to uh, thank you very much, Susan, for the invitation, and also thank East West Center for this uh, marvelous conference. Thank you all. Thank you. Please have a seat. Uh, I think we probably have a min couple of minutes left for five minutes for a couple of questions. I'd love to ask you a couple myself, and then we'll see if we can get one or two from the audience. Uh, uh, first question is, it, it, um, it seems to me, like you said, that app was from 2015, I believe, right? The, the Xinhua app, yeah, from 2015. Is Xinhua actually getting a bit late into the social media space? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't make it clear. Actually, uh, we actually launch, launched the updated version of Xinhua News in 2015. We launched the Xinhua app much, much earlier, but uh, in 2015, it's a totally new updated version. Okay. Do I, do I need to repeat? <laughs> okay. We actually launched Xinhua app much, much longer, uh, not in 2015, but in 2015, we uh, updated, uh, launched a totally new version. Yeah. Okay. I guess my question really, though, is is because uh, Xinhua is, as you mentioned, a very, very old organization, <laughs> and that's probably very traditional. Were they a bit slow or a bit late to recognize that they needed to be more in the social media space? And I'll tell you why I asked the question. I remember in 2011, when there was the Wenzhou train crash, for example, mm -hmm. I found out the news from the netizens on Weibo before it was officially on Xinhua. So I'm just wondering, is Xinhua recognizing now that they need to be out there first and more aggressive on social media? Actually, I think that's it, it's the power of social media. Uh, and for news organization, uh, especially for news agency, I think it's actually it's always the first to feel the impact of technology because we are the content provider. And as I said, Tsinghua is very big, very massive. Every step is not easy. And we actually started trying uh, social media quite early, but uh, uh, I think uh, only in those recent uh, five years, we are putting all resources into it and trying to have this uh, mobile first strategy. Great. And another thing I'm wondering, so you're the social media editor, correct? Uh, for my department. <laughs> yeah, for your department. Uh, do you, is the audience for, on social media the same as the audience for, that would read Xinhua stories in People's Daily? Do you think you're appealing to a different audience? I think that's, that is a question for all media organizations that concerns to the uh, question of targeted audience, right? Uh, we do feel the difference between when we are working as myself, when I work as a social media editor or a writer for new service. Um, for example, while I was a journalist, uh, like writing stories on the health beat or education beat, I, what I need or what I think about is I just need to write a story and deliver a good written story. But while I was working on social media, my first uh, when I picked the story from Xinhua's uh, news viruses, I would, I, my first uh, you know, criteria or standard is, is it interesting or does it make sense? Is it can it uh, provide information or can it, provide, can it entertain our audience? And also, do we have photo? Do we have video? It's just very, very different. Just, I think for social media, it uh, really uh, changes our mindset as a, a journalist working in the old and massive of news organization. And uh, has Xinhua on social media or on mobile platforms been breaking stories? Because I seem to recall when the, the term limits were changed last year, I seem to recall that actually came out on social media before it was kind of official. No, it was released uh, on our newswire first and then on social media. And, uh, and just one more question for me, because I'm kind of curious about it. Uh, I noticed that uh, there's a lot more in English now, mm -hmm. um, especially there's even a Xinhua Twitter account. Even though I can't get Twitter when I'm in China, I can see Xinhua <laughs> on Twitter. Is there an a, a, a active attempt to appeal to now more of a foreign and international audience? Um, as I said, uh, Xinhua is a state news agency, but we, all, we are also an international news agency because we have 180 bureaus across the world and we provide news services in eight languages. So we have a lot of readers across the world and like Twitter and Facebook, they are powerful social media platforms and people get information from it. And as a news organization, it's our responsibility to reach out to our audience. Oh, okay, Let's see a couple of questions here. Here's a question over here. Okay. Thank, 
Thank you. Could you explain how censorship works with a live stream? Censorship with live, live stream? Right, you mentioned your live stream app, yeah. and you have... If something live stream, how can the censors be quick enough to stop something they may not want on live stream? I think every news organization has its editorial principle, and you have to follow this ed editorial principle. I don't feel any censorship when we're doing live stream. <laughs> Just, and in, and in, can independent journalists use this, or it has to be a state-run organization that uh, has I think access? This, uh, for any news organization, if you want to go live on your own personal account, it's okay. But if you want to go live on Twitter, Xinhua's Twitter account, or AP Twitter account, you have to follow this uh, uh, editorial procedure, right? Thank you. Okay. I see Tom Grundy in the middle has a very friendly Hi. question. Hi. <laughs> okay. Tom from Hong Kong Free Press. Um, we and this year the New York Times have published evidence that Xinhua paid for hundreds of thousands of fake followers and retweets on Twitter. Can you explain this misuse of Western social media platforms that are censored in the mainland? Uh, I've been working um, as a social media editor for three years, and we Xinhua has never bought fake, fake, uh, fake fans. You, you paid Devumi, uh, uh, an American firm. And all our practices are uh, by, uh, are lawful, and all our uh, operations are with the agencies uh, authorized by Twitter and Facebook. You can double check with them. You have 12.1 million followers, way more than the BBC, and it's banned in the mainland, so it doesn't add up. Uh, as I said, Xinhua is an international news agency, and I don't know whether you, you verify this or not. You can talk to Twitter if you have any doubts with our, with our fans. Well, you can actually get on Twitter in the mainland for, through VPNs, as most people use, to bypass the firewall. You have time for one last one. She's been standing um, patiently. Just a quick question. Can you share more about how the um, Xinhua cloud works and if we can maybe utilize the tools or facilities, that they, the features that they have maybe here internationally as well? Just like what kind of features the Xianchang Yun has? Uh, uh, Xinhua cloud actually Currently, it's only in Chinese. <laughs> so, but I think it's a very potential news um, app. Uh, apart from it's a free online editing app, it also offers uh, a national platform for our uh, local media outlets. As we all know that many Chinese local med uh, media outlets, when we are having this discussion, they all say that they have this uh, difficulty of developing their own news app due to financial pressure or you know, all those you know, uh, financial problems. So this news app offered them a very convenient tool, offered them and their reporters. They can go live, they can go online editing, distributing. They do not need to develop their own news app. That's the one strength of this news app. And for the other, I think it also pro provide uh, a national platform because on this platform, I think uh, just on the screen, you could see that all the contents were from our local, uh, all local media outlets like uh, in Sichuan, in Guangdong. Um, they have this platform to d distribute their content to audience across China. And also, uh, Xinhua is helping to get those uh, content. You know, we use those uh, content. We, uh, if their quality is good enough, and we will release it from our news wire provided to our clients. So it's a win-win. Um, Solution, I think. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for. I want to really thank you, though. I thought one of the most interesting things was the media brain, where you could find these terms and how some old terms fall out of use and new terms are coming. It's only in. a very, very small part of each job. Oh, I'd love to use that one more. I want to see how I want to see if that term hurting the feelings of the Chinese people is ever going to fall out of oh. use. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we will work on that. <laughs> work on that one for us. I want to thank you for coming up here and braving the. Uh, slings and arrows and telling us all the great things that Xinhua is doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.